well, this is new. This is cool. I like this. I'm a computer character. This is awesome. I could jump around the bay. I should probably go on with the show. Hello everybody, I'm Mac Forsyth and welcome to the first ever gaming edition of the 11 o'clock waffle. No trivial news this week, just an hour of waffle purely devoted to the art of gaming. For a show of this magnitude, we need not just four top wafflers, but four top gamers. First up, the only panellist today of a Triforce tattoo and Link outfit. A victory two weeks ago produced cries of fix and bribery from Lucy and Tomo, who lost. It's Ashlyn Toy. Waka 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 waka. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Excited to be here. I'm going to say that that's all I have to contribute right now is just Pac-Man noises. But yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll do my best. Secondly, a man who spent many a night's work on his essays at university playing video games instead. A man who last time out openly declared himself victorious before the opening round, and then lost. He's the team rocket of the waffle, it's James Miller. Hello everybody, good to be back. Not bad, not bad. You Looking forward to winning this time. <laughs> good luck with that. Our next guest recently completed a tour of America, where she made a home movie of herself swallowing the salty taste of bacon brownie. Former co-host of Back to the Decade, she's been by my side on the radio since the very beginning. Carla Smith, welcome back. Hello. So we're with characters now. Yep, yep, we've, we've, we've turned into 16-bit game characters. It's quite cool. Look, I can jump. So if we say that we're doing something, does that mean like Ed's just going to have more... To do. Yeah, look, I fought George Gordon <laughs> Joseph Levitt to sit next to you for the show. <laughs> God damn it! That's wonderful. <laughs> That's a low blow. Just, just for the record, I am going to cartwheel just all the time in this. Please, Ed. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anything. I think, I think Ed's just exhausted from life. Uh, okay. This makes me happy. The more things you request, the longer it will take this show to come out. <laughs> And last of all, without him, this show would probably never have happened. The man, the ponytail, the legend, Edgar Duncan, everybody! Whoa! Hello! <laughs> what was that? That was what? a That's a crash noise, isn't it? When he dies. <laughs> How are you, Ed? I'm doing good, I'm doing great, I'm doing winning. You're a game character, oh, too. I I thought you said women then. <laughs> 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 Anime damage. Apart from Ashlyn, this is the exact same lineup as our first ever show way back on February the 3rd, 2011. Really? Yep. Little fact I came across an hour ago when I was frantically finishing off the show. <laughs> it's quite good or bad for me. <laughs> it means we're going to annihilate you, Ashlyn. Oh, oh, does it? Oh, does it? No, not at all. I know I don't even deserve to be here. <laughs> hey, does I was gonna say, sword? Carla. I was gonna say, Carla. How, how many of you won? <laughs> I won out of how many times I've been. Yeah, there you go. We're tying. You see, we're, we're just as good as each other. To be fair, J- James. Be out yeah. of one. James, how many have you thrown from a winning position? Oh, about all of them. <laughs> all it of them. The longer you're on this show, the the worse you get at it. Except for Ed. <laughs> I'm oh. actually gonna agree with that. Okay. okay, let's get on with the may, show. I may have peaked too soon. <laughs> let's get on with the show. Question number one of our gaming special, with Microsoft announcing that their latest games console, the Xbox One, will require its users to sign in once every 24 hours in order to play their game. And a game you've borrowed from somebody you've known for less than 30 days or has already exceeded their lending limit. Or if somebody from your family is already playing that game. Or if you haven't connected your console up to the Kinect. Or if you're trying to play a game used from a publisher who doesn't allow trade-ins. So given that Microsoft have made the world's least game-friendly games console, is traditional gaming dying? Edgar? <laughs> well, besides maybe Xbox One, uh, I'm going to say no, it's, it's not dying. Because I think the games market is actually expanding to incorporate a wider populace of playing games, you see. So, you get, like... I don't know, take the casual games market, for example. It's like um, short, smaller games uh, invented primarily for people who may not be into console gaming and may not you know, always be about, and they'll be about on the move. So, you know, they're, they're 
more interest in their phones and such. So you got basically these casual games made for phones. They, you know, it's marketed towards them. But that's in addition to the traditional games that still exist. Basically, it's just the because the, the market's expanding that you might say that. And I think a good example is the fact even the PS3 and the PS4 now, they're still focusing on games, but they have other editions that are for other people, like whether it's a PlayStation Move or even just sort of Love Film on there. It's just sort of extra editions. Whereas I think Microsoft and Xbox One have sort of lost their way. They're trying to appeal for it to everyone, but they're not appealing to anyone by doing that. If they stayed a traditional game console, they wouldn't perhaps be laughed at the room. But um, no, I don't think it's dying at all. Okay, and Carla, next please. I kind of think that it's evolved, but along the way it has lost a few of its traditional kind of aspects. I mean, it's like a little bit like how Ed was saying. Sorry, I'm going to bring up what I wrote on Word. Oh. Um, <laughs> like, like the best of us. <laughs> wow, I was just winging it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't wing. But... How, how, but, yeah, how can a wingman um, doesn't wing? I don't know. A wing woman, perhaps? Ah. Uh. A wing ah. woman is calculated. And evil. What? <laughs> Cold and calculated. Mm. Anyway, back to the question, <laughs> which was something. I think it's evolved but lost a few of the traditional aspects along the way. I mean, it's a bit like Ed was saying. A lot of games these days focus on multiplayer, but it's kind of like being online multiplayer. There's very little kind of focus on playing with a few friends around now. And it's kind of lost that aspect. It, it does make it great for kind of the online thing, and that's become the new tradition. Okay. This wasn't a very calculated answer. <laughs> okay, James, next, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Carla to an extent. I think it is it's, it's evolving rather than dying out. I mean, what you've got with the Xbox One, I mean, you've got all the other media aspects of it, but it's sort of it's just more immersive game experience. There's stuff like the um, the snap feature where you can snap in other things like your Skype or you know, your TV while you're playing the game and then stuff like the, the Windows Smart Glass so you can affect your game from a phone, laptop or tablet at the same time as playing the game so it's just a different form of game and what everybody seems to be forgetting is that they're re-releasing 360 they're keeping the traditional gaming console going they're releasing new games for it so it's not dying it's just exploring different avenues yeah Okay, and Ashlyn, last but not least. I tend to agree with uh, Edgar. I, I don't think traditional gaming is dying at all, actually, really. I think the Xbox have kind of released this glorified skybox thing that they've really kind of shot themselves in the foot. But if you look at, say, uh, PS4's response uh, to the new no-share policy, which I'm sure if anyone, anyone it, who is a gamer has seen this video... It is hilarious. It's so funny. <laughs> It's like, here's how to share a game on the PlayStation 4. Oh, yes. Here you go. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, it's a really cute little, like, nod to traditional gaming because, you know, we've been lending our friends games and playing secondhand games since they came out. And um, that's just the way it's been done. And I think the Xbox are really going to regret their decision to kind of, like, release this Netflix box. Uh, TV, you know, it's just a TV box. Yeah. I was just going to say, if, I think if they don't fix their decisions in the next few years, they're, they're going to really go away with the dinosaur. You know, just... Yeah, I mean, someone made an interesting point, though, is that Microsoft kind of win anyway, because there's people like me who I'm not really interested in the PlayStation um, either, so I'm just going to stick to PC gaming. Well, yeah, then, so you. well, technically, it's not even Microsoft that get my money, it's Steam, so it's Valve, I don't really... <laughs> I don't mind if they get my money. So, um, but no, I mean, I was going to say, in the very sort of tradition of it, even if publicized, publicized, published games are losing that kind of momentum and all this online play and stuff, you still got like um, indie multiplayer games like Castle Crashers, which really sort of drive home competitive and cooperative localized multiplayer gaming. Um, which I think is, you know, the very spirit of traditional gaming is sat on a sofa with a couple of mates swearing furiously at your TV. I think I think that's probably a good point, actually. It's like, um, even though the games market is evolving and expanding in the way it is, it's the fact you have all these indie developers still creating very yeah. traditional games are still out there. And that is only growing. It's not shrinking at all. That's just getting more bigger, and more larger. Bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> okay, no right or wrong answers there, so everybody can have three points. 
Okay. Everyone's a winner. Just, just, just smile and agree. Smile and okay. nod, Smile and nod. Uh, for this nod. second question, I think I'm just going to sit at this piano and start playing. Music plays an important part in any media, so what is the greatest gaming soundtrack? Ashlyn. Oh, um, <laughs> I, you're going to hate me, but uh, this, I said this is a mean uh, question because there are a lot of games with incredibly different but incredibly beautiful soundtracks. And uh, on, the, on the threat of breaking convention, I've decided to give my top five in no particular order. I'll try and keep it as brief as I can, and I'll probably mention <laughs> some ones that... Carla probably wants to mention, and Ed probably wants to mention. I probably. swear to God, if you mention my answer. This is what I knew what was going to happen with this <laughs> question. It was just going to be all of us hoping that we were the first one to be asked. Look, it's not just I've this got, question, I've got trust good range. I've got a good range. So, not in any particular order, but the first I'm going to mention is Chrono Trigger in <sighs> SNES, which uh, is probably one of my, my most favourite soundtracks ever. It was composed by the same guy who did uh, most of the Final Fantasy games. I can't pronounce his name, so... Abu Amatsu. Oh, point for A. Yeah. Oh, come on! Like, I was gonna try and not embarrass the show by being borderline racist. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, no, it's it's really pretty. He's He's got a really good way with it. Uh, the second of my answers was Final Fantasy VII, which is... is huh? No, that was one of my answers. <laughs> Carry on. Well, of course it's, because, I mean, it's one of the most... It's the best, like, known soundtrack, really. It uh, is. It, it's up there, definitely. Yeah. I mean, his his music is it's just so melodic and atmospheric, and, like, his battle music is just spot on. And I think, you know, most SNES games as well, to be honest, like, they're kind of some of my favourite, because they're all sort of tinkly, and if that's a scientific word... Uh, yeah, they're just, they're really, it's really nice music. Um, and the others I want to quickly mention are uh, Curse of Monkey Island, because it has like a, an island tone to it. It's kind of a little bit sort of Jamaican and Caribbean and stuff. Um, I love the theme so much that it's my ringtone. Uh, and Bioware's Mass Effect and Dragon Age series as well, because again, they're really spot on with like atmosphere and they really suit their games. And uh, lastly, I mean, the girl with the Triforce tattoo would be a miss, not to mention the Legend of Zelda franchise, uh, particularly Ocarina of Time. But my favourite is uh, A Link to the Past, which, again, is another SNES game. I just I think I really think the SNES is a pretty nice console, but more about that later. Hey, Carla, you got anything left? <laughs> uh, I do, <laughs> yay! Um... I'm so afraid someone's going to say this. Ed might still say it. I don't know. Um, well, you can't now because it's your turn. I know. But <laughs> you're in there. I'm, I'm going to go with Little Big Planet. Um, okay. mm. It's just, it's kind of, it uses songs in kind of music that you don't really like associate with anything and then they bring it in and it's just beautiful. Like, I've been playing Little Big Planet too. And there is one level where you have to do lots of jumping and collecting points. And you do it to one of the songs from Saturday Night Fever. And it's amazing. And you're just there going... <laughs> in... I can't believe I just did that. But <laughs> and then there's the bit... Um, it's like the main theme is the... <laughs> And it's just kind of cheerful and happy and gets you kind of like in a cool little mood to play it and stuff. And I'm just... Say, oh, carry on, carry on. Um, no, I was just going to say, uh, it's interesting actually, one of the songs featured on the first one uh, is uh, called Atlas by Battles. Um, that kind of really introduced me to Battles and they were kind of like a, a weird kind of synth pop experimentative band from New York and that was, it was, you know, part of my soundtrack of the year it came out, so that was really cool. But yeah, I completely forgot about that when I was writing this answer. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, Battles. Edgar. Oh, oh. How rude. <laughs> you just cut Carla off like that, oh, dear. You Bastard. That. Well, okay, so it's funny because um, Nobuo Uematsu is like my favourite composer ever, anyway. But 
So my answer is actually Final Fantasy IX soundtrack. Nine. <laughs> Damn it. And you know why it's nine? It's because there's something a lot more about it that seems to have a lot more tunes seem to have a lot more energy to them. Whether that's Miskel, like, whether that's Kuja's theme, or whether that's no, no. as a dance theme, it, 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 or even oh, Bermisia, there's so many great tunes in that. And seven does have great tunes, but nines is is slightly better. And it, even the composer himself has stated that nine is his favourite soundtrack. Um, but I do have to say, an honourable mention has to go like if I was to choose a second place one, it would it'd have to be the Super Smash Brothers Brawl soundtrack. Because that soundtrack's incredible. It just it seems to incorporate all the games from lots of Nintendo franchises. And, and to the extent they're recomposed and, and remixed, yeah. is just excellent. Really, well and truly. Completely forgot about that. <laughs> okay, and James? Ed kind of stole one of my nice Final Fantasy IX as well, because it's about my favorite, one of my favourite games ever, and it's just a fantastic soundtrack. But, um, I've also got the, the old Pokemon games on the Game Boy. Oh, so nice so me- such memorable little little jingly tunes as you're walking along the, the different routes and that. And then I've got um, We Love Katamari. <laughs> so it's such a trippy game. <laughs> it's so much fun, and the soundtrack just mirrors that the, the fun of the game perfectly, I think. So, yeah. That's me. Okay, question number three. Games are becoming more and more cinematic in their approach and storylines. So with that in mind, what is the worst game to film adaptation out there? And we'll just keep this one short. So, James first. I've got two for this. I've got um, Legend of Chun-Li, Street Fighter film. That was appallingly cast and the story was shocking. And I've got the, uh, the Legend of Zelda TV series. <laughs> Excuse me, princess, is all I've got to say about that. <laughs> okay, and from Zelda to Ashlyn. Um, I've gone with Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which was 1997. Uh, it was actually the second uh, co- Mortal Kombat that they tried to do, but it, it's just so ridiculously awful. Like the special, the special effects are so well, uh, they're just they're just really poor. They're like 1970s special effects, and it's it's probably entirely green screened. It got really bad reviews. It's just it's just painful to watch. Is that the one starring um, Christoph Lambert <clears throat> from Highlander? I I don't no, honestly was... know. I it has no one in it of any note. To be that honest, was... I looked at the cast. There's no one that I recognise. Uh, Chris Lambert is in the first one. Um, his character Raiden was replaced with James Lamar in Annihilation. Knowledge, James. Um, yeah, they were going to release a new film recently, but instead the director ended up making a web series called Mortal Kombat Legacy. It's uh, partially live acted and partially animated, and actually, it's it's actually really quite good. I watched one of the episodes earlier doing my research, so yeah, it's really quite good. Okay, Edgar next. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I think my number one answer is definitely their TV adaptation, and that's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. It's an awful series. Wait, what? It, the Super Mario <laughs> Brothers Super Show was a, a cartoon animated uh, series of Super Mario Brothers. But what point it, it had is just beyond me. It was absolutely random episodes full of rubbish. Um, and to be fair, the, the Street Fighter live action film was pretty awful as well. <laughs> and Carla laughed. Super Mario Bros. The Movie with yeah. Bob Hoskins. I need to see this. I still need to see this. It's, it's, it's actually quite a guilty pleasure of mine. I quite like it. <laughs> For all of the wrong reasons, though. Rotten Tomatoes gave it like 16%. <laughs> and it's just... It's, it's to the point that Bob Hoskins himself is just like, can we not talk about this movie that I was in long ago? And it's just... Uh, you, you have to watch it to really believe that such a thing exists. It's beautiful. It's horrifically beautiful. Question four now, and time to look at the stories of games that never were. This round we'll be looking at the sad tales of games that never made it to the shop shelves. So, James, do you want to start us off here? Yeah, I've got, got one in particular that really made me very angry. Um, it's uh, one that LucasArts was set to release in uh, spring of 2014 called Star Wars 1313. Was supposed to focus on Boba Fett and his exploits, but um, obviously that was cancelled because Lucas films quite stupidly completely annihilated and liquidated uh, the Lucas Arts portion of the company. So that's not going to happen. Okay, uh, Ed, next, please. Uh, well, <laughs> Crash Bandicoot 2010, also known as Crash Landing, because it was like a reboot, a revitalization for the series, and it looked like it was going in the right direction. Everything about it looked 
right. And then Activision decided to basically lay off half of uh, Radical Entertainment. Well, in fact, three quarters of Radical Entertainment, the half that made the Crash games and half the team that made Prototype. So it's not going to happen now. And somehow Activision still have the rights to Crash, but plan to not do anything with the game ever. So there we go. Bad times. Carla. Um, I had to ask around about this, and Tony gave me a beautiful answer. Thrill Kill, which was a yeah. PS1 game. Yes. That was, yeah, in 1998. It was basically just four people fighting in the same room. And it was stopped because of how violent it was and because of sexual content as well. <laughs> um, ex- I'm reading from Wikipedia here examples of this content include BDSM and fetish, fetish, bleh, fetishistic costume to that, limb dismemberment, and violent special moves with names such as bitch slap and swallow this. <laughs> slightly like a really crap version of Mortal Kombat. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I but, but with more <laughs> Uh, oh, mm. And last of all, Ashlyn. Again with LucasArts, I went with Full Throttle 2. Uh, Full Throttle is a 1995 uh, adventure that focuses on the leader of a biker gang and the daughter of the CEO of the last motorcycle company because ground transport was giving way to hovercrafts. Uh, it was set in like a dystopian future. I can't even talk now. Dystopian future. Uh, it was really gritty and it was really funny, like most LucasArts games. Uh, Tim Schafer, who worked on it, uh, left the company, and in 2000, a new team headed by Larry Ahern, who developed the first one, attempted to make Full Throttle 2 Payback, which would have seen uh, Ben, the leader, trying to take down a new corporation responsible for turning paved roads into hover pads, which would obviously screw up the bikers. Apparently, that one fell apart because of disagreements on the game style, like the genre and how it played because point and click games have been on shaky ground for you know quite a while they're now sort of making a comeback thankfully but um yeah so there was there was some disagreements between the production team and an unnamed influential person in the management so that one was scrapped and then the one that people actually know about is uh full throttle hell on wheels uh, because that was developed in 2002 and was um, actually showcased at E3 2003 with a playable demo before it was just sort of cancelled out of thin air with absolutely no reason given. But it apparently had more of an action-adventure uh, angle to it, so it would have focused more on, like, fighting and stuff. So it's been speculated that it received poor reviews of the graphics and basically that it would have been an insult to the original and then also the guy who was the voice actor for the main character died in 2002, so that, that could have had some partial responsibility. But yeah, that just got pulled and a lot of people were really angry about that. Probably do some scores now. In last place on 14 points, it's Ashlyn. Oh, what? Tied I was on so expecting my 16, name. it's James and Edgar. Oh. And also on 16, it's Carla. I'm not last. What the fuck is going on? Ah, oh, docked points Doc for swearing, or I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> Fifteen on Carla. Damn it. I'll be honest. I'm going to lose points in the next round then, because this is the only paragraph I've got where I do swear. But it, it's needed. It's needed. So question five. We've all played games. We've all had that wonderful moment where an incredible period of inspiration, our button bashing is sublime and we produce something incredible. So what is your most memorable gaming experience or moment? Carla? Technically, this is like years and years long, but it's a tradition that me and my brother have. You see, we are massive fans of WWF, WWE, and since the official gaming starting, since the official gaming series started all the way back in 2000 with WWF Smackdown, it's always been tradition that the first fight is me versus him, and that has stuck from 2000 to this very day. Yeah, it's kind of, the games come out in November, so when he buys them, he actually waits until I come home from uni before he even plays it. And even since he's moved out and everything like that, we still make it the thing that the first match played on it has to be me versus him. So that's my gaming mix. James? I went for um, the, when Morrowind first came out on the Xbox. Uh, I was playing it and I was in a, a temple in one of the cities where these uh, where the guys, the ordinators, were in there. There's this really nice helmet sat on a pedestal. And I thought, oh, I'll take that and I'll wear that. Uh, and I took it, and the ordinator, ordinator went absolutely mental. 
<laughs> and just started throwing spells and whacking me with their swords. I had no idea what was going on. Apparently, I'd stolen their god's sacred icon. <laughs> uh, from that moment on, every, every any time an ordinator saw me anywhere, didn't matter where I was, they would always try to kill me. Nice one. <laughs> Edgar. And uh, we're <laughs> a game called Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3, in which um, it's a fighting game. It's a very good fighting game, actually, very underrated. Uh, but I'd, I used to play it with, with, one of, with quite a lot of my friends, actually. Um, and we'd always, always play that game. Always. I'd be uh, particularly Android 17, and uh, one of my friends used to be uh, Team Gohan. And we'd always basically play that game. And then years later, like, we, we'd play it, like, Constantly, you know, three years later, we still found ourselves still playing that game, having matches against each other. And I did everything in that game. I, I even did the um, extreme, super, very difficult mode in that game. Um, so, in general, those moments of my friend, in general, gameplay of that fighting game is one of my fondest memories in general. Okay, and Ashlyn, lastly. Most of my childhood was spent sat in my brother's room with the curtains drawn, watching him play something from like the PS1 or the PS2, and then finally, like, the GameCube. Um, he's pretty much responsible for my being a gamer today, but I mean, I probably shouldn't have been watching him play Resident Evil 2 at the age of 8, as I have a very active <laughs> imagination. And well, that's exactly what I did with Resident Evil. Generally, I it was it my it. <laughs> with my older brother. Yeah. So I, I had lots of nightmares, but you know, whatever. Uh, those gaming sessions, though, were probably the most bonding my brother and I sort of did. I think the most memorable was watching him play Tomb Raider 2, and as he was walking down, uh, he was walking through a cave like killing off endangered species as you do and uh, he had to walk down this slope to the next level of the cave and out of nowhere this bloody great tiger just jumps off the ledge above him and we both yell and he dies and then we just piss ourselves laughing and then he tries again and we it just happens again and we jump twice <laughs> It just like made us jump out of our seats. I mean, that's why I like playing games like with other people, like because you both experience it. It's the same with Resident Evil too. Like I hate it when like the zombie arms burst in through the boarded windows. It's just like <laughs> you, you know, my brother used to. Um, whenever uh, Resident Evil Three, particularly, whenever one of those moments would come up where it give you a choice or a nemesis <laughs> approaching you. I was like, oh, God. I was like nine, eight, nine years old. He would always throw the controller at me and go, hey, quick! <laughs> and I'd like, freak yeah. out. Yeah, I can't play games like that. I just end up rage quitting and curling into the fetal position. <laughs> I'm much better, like, watching other people play them. Uh, well, unless, unless it's Mac, because you're useless at Dead Rising. Just saying. Dude. Yeah, you've not seen me kick that football into a crowd of zombies. <laughs> You haven't, you haven't even beaten the clown boss yet. Oh, really, Matt? I, 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 I have found him. I just didn't have any weapons at the time. <laughs> you're in a mall for a There are zombies, zombies out there. And you have no weapons. I had a football and a... There's weapons. Every every weapon. Weapon. Make Basically, a weapon. my point is proven. <laughs> I was good as Batman, yeah, though. Yeah, I redeemed myself with my Batman skills. Does he, Ashlyn? I, I don't know. I haven't watched him play Batman. So he could be lying. He could be. He doesn't play Batman. He just runs around in a black suit with a <laughs> mask in his face in the streets going, on Batman. Yeah. Can I pull a sword out and chop Carla's head off? No. No. Can it respawn in He's like already munching on your arm quite happily. Can? Okay, could her could she respawn with two heads like the Hydra from Hercules Legend? Can I can I then just eat Matt? <laughs> oh. <laughs> if I win, can I set fire to all the losers? Can James breathe fire anyway? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Question six. Uh, time now to look at some of the more influential people from the world of gaming. The designers, the writers, and the voice actors that help make video games come to life. Carla, we'll start with you here. You started with me last time. Well, we'll start with you again. I'll take points off if you don't stop moaning. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Ken Kutaragi. I think that's how you say it. Edgar. The, oh. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, Edgar's the um, pronunciation expert. I just thought he might know how to say that man's name. Oh, right. oh I thought you were no. just going like, to move on. Just for my dances. No, I don't know. Okay, carry on, Carla. He is known as the father of the PlayStation, and it's basically because of him that the PS1 became as big as it did. And in the process, it also made gaming as popular as it is in its widespread and I think that's a pretty big deal, to be honest. I have, I have been... Funnily enough, we actually bought this guy up earlier, um, and it is uh, Nobu Omatsu, because I think his composer genius is absolutely incredible. He, he's 
It's not just the Final Fantasy series he's worked in, he has worked on a lot of others, I mean, such as Chrono Trigger and Blue Dragon. I think Blue Dragon's highly underrated as well. And Lost Odyssey, he's worked on a lot of games, and you know, there's so memorable tracks. And I think he's done... I mean, these things get taken to, to like, uh, orchestral things and, and uh, even rock versions. They get remade constantly because of how awesome they are. He has done justice to video game music. Uh, I think he's... Highly influential for any other composer. Okay, uh, Ashlyn next. My my answer is Tim Schafer. Um, I absolutely worship him. Um, he he's you know a flag bearer for adventure games in general. And his new company, uh, Double Fine Adventures, and by new I mean like in the last ten years, <laughs> but um, uh, they've just successfully crowdfunded the first point and click nostalgia project, um, but, like by a known company, to prove that now independent gaming companies no longer have to rely on the money and the restrictions that come with it from publishing houses. Uh, the game uh, has been called Broken Age, and they're sort of keeping their backers up to date with everything, and like they get uh, say on what what it is and it's just a brand new way really for indie developers to kind of fund themselves in a way and basically Tim Schafer has just he's always been like pushing and pushing and pushing for this genre because it's it's sort of a buried genre there's quite a niche market for it but those who do play like point and clicks are very very passionate about them he's just really like personable he he's a god basically he's a friendly jolly god amongst men and i think i would cry if i ever met him you just burst into tears would it be like tears of happiness yeah i i, <clears throat> I would cry ever tim i would i would cry okay <laughs> uh, ever tim okay and james last of all i got a, a couple of, i've got firstly for duke Nukem. Ooh. The character. I mean, if I had the if I had, if I had the Duke Nukem soundboard on my laptop right now, I would be using it. I would just use that exclusively for answering these questions because it's just hilarious. I mean, if, yeah. you've, if you've seen any of the videos on YouTube, like people going on online game forums and just trolling the hell out of people, but using the didn't me the, you the and Callum Duke Nukem soundboard. Didn't me you and Callum do a whole show of just the Duke Nukem soundboard? Probably. <laughs> it's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of God. It's just, it's just legendary. I mean, and people waiting around for Duke Nukem Forever. I mean, it's, it's had a massive impact on the gaming world, hasn't it? I mean, it's amazing. And then secondly, I've gone for the game reviewer Yahtzee because either you either love him or you hate him, but he influences what people buy and what people play. Because if you agree with him, you go out and get it. If you disagree with him, you don't go out and get it. I think he can be pretty influential when he wants to. Be. Okay, so time for the scores. In last place. On 19, it's Carla. On 21, it's Ashlyn. Ooh. Narrowly ahead of her, it's 22 points for Edgar. Ooh. And somehow on 23, it's James. Oh, yeah. And now we enter question seven, which you will have down as the mystery mega points round. Oh, what is we do? <laughs> for those of you... Reveal the mystery. Okay, I shall now reveal the mystery. Oh. I will now yeah. open the mystery oh, okay. box and reveal what the mystery mega points round is. So our guests will have to name the 151 original Pokemon without repeating or hesitating. However, if the oh. other panellists oh. believe them to have paused or repeated a Pokemon, they can shout in with their buzzword. If they are correct and they get control of the round, the victor is the person who names the last Pokemon. <laughs> we're gonna be here for hours don't worry are we, to, are we talking the original 100 yeah the original there's 151 151 yeah stop typing james stop googling james i'm scrolling down my i'm scrolling down my notes <laughs> No, you're not. Your notes can't help you now. So who starts okay, it? Okay, James, as you're in the lead, you get to go first. And I am going to oh, put... Sure. Really got it. Do you name these from number one to 154? <laughs> okay, okay, Ed, what's your buzzword? Lemon. Okay, Carla? Banana. Ashlyn? Cherry. And James, what will be your buzzword? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so that we don't go on for, for hours with this, I am going to put a two-minute timer on it. So, James, you ready to start? Um... Yeah, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> Close down the internet window you've inevitably opened up in that time. Okay. It's, there is no window. 151 okay, Pokemon. Go. Uh, Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur. Squirtle. Oh, banana! 
Yeah, that was definitely a pause. Okay, Carla. Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard, Squirtle, Blastoise. Yeah. Oh. I'm sure that was a pause between Squirtle. That wasn't that much of a pause, James. Hurry up. Carla, carry on. Pidgeotto, um... Yeah, that was definitely a pause. Yeah. Where, where are we carrying on from? Carrying on from? You just say them. Okay. Lemon! <laughs> <laughs> Caspi, metaphor, butter free. It's got to be a Weedle in there somewhere. Kakuna, Beedrill. Uh, Berry. Uh, Berry, yep. Golpion, Vaporeon, Eevee, um... Fuck, Okay, hang on, I'm trying to cross these off. I'm trying to cross these off, Carla. This was a bad idea. Okay, Carla. This was a bad idea. No, this will work. There's only a minute and a half to go. It's fine. I thought it was called just a minute because it was a minute long. Well, that's the show. This round isn't just a minute. This is just improvising. You didn't say that. Okay, Carla, go. James, go. Beckham, Zarbuck, Pikachu, Raichu, Nidoran, Female, Nidorina, Nidoqueen. Lemon! Ed! Kabuto, Kabutops, uh, Aerodactyl, Omanite, Omastar, uh, the... Harry, I have none, Ashley. I don't even know. Lemon! Ed! <laughs> Ghastly, Haunter, Gengar, uh, Voltor. Carla! Carla! <laughs> 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 Yeah, Persian, Cyber, Golduck, Growlithe, Darkseid. Lemon! Cyber, <laughs> <laughs> Jinx, Miss Magma, Mr. Mime, Electabuzz, um, Taurus. Norlax, Articuno, uh, Moltres, the other one, Zapdos. Lemon! <laughs> yeah. Get up, Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, uh, Venona, Venomoth, Glue. Is that James? Yeah, why not? Jay. Krabby, Voltorb, Electrode, Execute, Exe- Exeter, Cubo, Marowak, Lickitung, Coffin, Weezing, Rhyhorn, Rhydon, Horsey, Seedra, um, Pollux. Jerry. Ashlyn. Mr. Mime, Jinx, Meow, uh, Goldeen, the other one. Carla, there's nine seconds oh, left. Oh, that's Slowpoke. Oh, no, no. Where are we Do you mean Dodeo? Lemon. Ed! Oh, Edgar! Dratini! Dragonite! Dragonite! You two and me! Ed's done it! That's two <laughs> minutes! Have we crossed off 151? I've no clue. I've pretty sure I said you two like ages ago, just for the record. Don't know, I, I remember those are like the last bunch in the list. I, I think I got about six, so I wouldn't worry, Carla. Did anybody say Magic Art? Yeah. Don't think anyone did. Oh. Okay. I think we did. Not I, 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 Gyarados. Magic Art! What about Gyarados or Lapras? I mean. No. <laughs> I reckon we missed about 30. We, we must have missed quite a few. If you want the full list. They always say Slowpoke. Yeah, someone did, yeah. Yeah, I think Carla said Slowpoke. Carla somehow missed War Tortle. Yeah, noticed that. You went Squirtle Blasters. <laughs> so Ed won that round. Ed, you can have five points for that. Oh. Oh, uh, oh yay! Yeah. Yay! Okay, well, I was going to make it 10, but then you'd have probably have won it by now, and there'd be no point in bothering for the rest of the show. <laughs> so now we enter the, the final round of questions, with the scores 21 for Ashlyn, 19 for Carla, James on 23, and Ed way ahead on 27. You made it sound like I have more points, then. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, but you can score extra points on these final rounds because I have been doing polls of our listeners and they have sent in what they believe is the greatest game character, console and game. So if your answer... How, how many have actually responded? Oh, hundreds of thousands. Yeah, hundreds like, of thousands. <laughs> how just, many just you just that by hundreds of thousands. So if you let me finish explaining, if you answer with one that's on the list, you get a oh. point. No. For every one person that said that, because some did get more than one vote. Oh. Really? Some even got three. It was a miracle. Dear God. So, so, so three people answered this. No, eight. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Eight people answered. Okay. Tony refused on principle. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me in the slightest. He Not should have been here. He knows so much more about this than me. He is here. He's in the background, tied up and gagged. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go and tickle his feet. Let's poke him with a stick. And pat him on the head. <laughs> there, there. There, there, Tony. <laughs> what would you like to do to Tony? Feed him waffles. Tickle him. Be like, um, which one's creatures. If you feed him waffles, is that not going to kill him? Oh, yeah. 
That's the renegade option. <laughs> <laughs> Question 8. The world of gaming is full of wonderful and interesting personalities, but who is the greatest video game character of all time? Edgar, as you're far out in the lead, let's go first. Well, my personal choice was Sly Cooper, but I don't think anyone's going to say that now, because I think he's so suave and actually really quite awesome. He's the kind of guy you probably would want to be, uh, providing you don't want to be a jar raccoon, to be said. Um, do I have to give just one answer? <laughs> yes, you have to give one answer on this round. Well, I've said Sly Cooper, there we go. James, next. This is so difficult, because I've got a list of five. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, HK47 from Knights of the Old Republic, because he is absolutely hilarious. Okay, and Carla? Now, see, do I, go, do I do tactical, or do I go for what I had written down? Because my special mention answer is going to be Barry Burton from Resident Evil. <laughs> because he has the greatest dialogue of all time. Jill Sandwich? <laughs> for a minute there, I thought you were a Jill Sandwich. Take this key with you. You, the master of lo- unlocking lock. things, could use this lock. But Barry, what would you take? I've got this. <laughs> What's oh, this? Oh, all right then, then I'll take this. Take this weapon. It's especially good against living things. Blood. <laughs> Oh, I think that's your answer, to be fair. Can I say Tomb Raider anyway? No! Because someone's definitely going to No! Die. No! Lara you Croft said Croft. Barry Burton. Move you, on! You did say Barry. Damn it, okay. I do love Barry. Okay, and Ashley. But Tomb Raider's definitely going to have things. Well, actually, my answer was Lara Croft, which is the actual character, because Tomb Raider is the game name. Good! Mm-hmm. I did just make that noise. <laughs> Why is there any anyway. clicks in front of your face? Just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My answer is sticking to classical was uh, Lara Croft. Uh, seeing as I did like do a fair portion on her on my dis- in my dissertation about uh, what she's what she the character has done for feminism, not the marketing team. Ignore them, they're idiots. But she's given females around the world confidence to enter into the gaming world, and most of them see her as a hero or like you know a female hero. Um, with, with that argument, did you did you bring in the uh, newer Tomb Raider as well no. in the game? No, no. that is really it's an amazing, amazing game. game. Because I, I think feminism, you've got to talk about the new game. The, the, yeah, the, well, yeah, I agree well, with that. In my dissertation, obviously, I brought up the point that you know, for some reason, whatever the marketing and the developers decided, oh, she can't simply be a strong woman. She has to have a massive spot of weakness before she can become strong. And yeah, from a gender point of view, there's a lot of stuff going on about that. But actually, if you look at some male heroes, things like Batman, you know, he he had a weakness that then turned into his strength. So it's not necessarily a gender thing. It is kind of just a comic book uh, system. It's a hero thing. Yeah, it's a storyline sort of okay, system. Okay, I'll give you three of the the ones we've had sent in. Somebody said James Bond. He was it you, Matt? It wasn't me. But that was, that's a storybook character, not a gaming character. Yeah, mm-hmm. somebody actually said James Bond. Uh, second place. Well, they're wrong. With two votes. Sonic. Oh. And the People's Choice Award for Greatest Game <laughs> Character. It better not be Solid Snake. John Marston. Oh, my God. John Marston. John Marston. From Red Dead. Really? Yes. <laughs> Eh, hey, who? Sorry, what? Is Isn't he quite a see-through character? Doesn't he just do what you want to do and, like, ride a Aww. horse? No, well, no, 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 no. no he's he, he's trying to redeem himself from a life of um, being an outlaw, but to be fair, he is actually quite likeable. He re- he's, oh, really? a lot like, he's a lot more likeable than his son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> My... My original answer was going to be um, Femshep from Mass Effect. Again, along yeah. the same line. It's about equality and stuff. But, like, yeah, she's she's pretty cool. I had the advisor guy from Dungeon Keeper because he's just <laughs> so funny. No, he's just telling you about the different villages you've destroyed. He's just hilarious. <laughs> Time for the greatest game. Ashlyn? Yep. Um, yeah, that's, it's a really tough question. But, I mean, mine... Uh, I think I think I have to go with probably Ocarina of Time. It's, yeah, it's a, it sounds a bit like a cop out, but it, you know, really from a nostalgic point of view, Ocarina was one of the best games on the N64. The songs from it were memorable. It introduced new systems and gameplay, and then for it to be re-released and updated on 3DS was genius because you had people who played the original enjoying it and. 
it was all shiny and new. And then you've got a new generation of gamers who were also interested. Um, so I shouldn't really, I don't need to explain why it's a great game if, if anyone who cares about gaming has either heard about it or played it. And yeah, strengths lie in imaginative dungeons and monsters, great character design, but besides Navi. <laughs> I never finished uh, it. No. Oh, hey, listen! Yeah, this is going to shock a lot of people, but Watch I've out. actually never completed Ocarina of Time. Oh, dear lord. And I've well, started it twice. I think I've completed it about four times. <laughs> I'm, I'm really good with starting games. I'm not so great with ending them. James. The water temples are right. I really found that quite easy compared to some of the later ones. It's, it's funny how everyone seems to remember the Water Temple, even those who haven't played the game. <laughs> they seem to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to, to mention it. Can I be really honest here? I've never played a Zelda game, and I have no idea what any of you are talking about. To be, no, no, to be brutally honest, this is exactly my point, because I never owned an N64. And I've actually never played all the way through um, Ocarina of Time myself. I never but got to the Water Temple, but I know how horrible it is from what yeah, everyone says. You know of it. I played Link's Awakening on the game. Okay, James, what's your answer? I think I'm going to have to go with Final Fantasy IX, because it's like one of the best games I've ever played in my life, and I just remember spending absolutely hours playing it growing up, like literally upwards of 80 hours poured into the game on a single playthrough. It's wicked. Okay, Ed? Greatest game? Bushido Blade. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Jack 2, or <laughs> PS2. Um, because surprisingly, I'm quite a, a big platformer fan. And when Jack 2 came around, it was like suddenly it had this all of the greatest bits of um, the Grand Theft Auto series, but in a platformer and in a well, very rounded story. It was a lot of fun to play, and it was actually quite hard. It was very open. I really enjoyed it, honestly. It was, it was just such an immersive experience. So, okay. Jack 2 for me. Okay, and Carla? I'm going to think tactically here, because I was so kind of just stuck on what to answer for this one. I'm going to go, since John Marston was the greatest character, I'm going to go for Red Dead. It's a great game. Tactics. Sneaky, sneaky tactics. That's what's funny about that. Red Dead, I only completed that. I, I, I took like two and a half years to even complete that game because I was going off doing so many random little things. I only, only I, completed I it a few weeks back. I did it a few weeks back. I get distracted yeah. lassoing people and tying them up. And exactly. In, in ordinary day life, to be fair. It's just what Mac does in ordinary life. Yeah. See, see and then he, he, he lassoes them, puts them on train tracks, and then goes home to play Red Dead. Yeah. <laughs> See, Carla went back to the hasn't got the achievement or trophy for putting someone on the track in the first place after tying them up. But, but nobody went for Red Dead as the greatest game. Yay! What? I'll give, give you the list of the games we've had. Um, I swear Crash... I had Raiders on there because I was going to say it. Crash yeah, Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot? Wait, what, the first? The first one. I think someone was playing tactically hoping Edgar would get points. <laughs> 007 Nightfire. No. Okay. Metal Gear Solid 3. Oh, to be fair, MGS 3 is amazing. Uncharted 3. No! Uncharted 2? Maybe Tekken. not. Tekken. Uncharted 3 was the one I on my list. Uncharted, Uncharted 3 was great, but Uncharted 2 is that bit better. And, and oh, somebody really? went for Spider-Man Web of Shadows. Oh my god. Sorry, who answered? Who answered? Yes. <laughs> We, we have to talk to them. 12 year olds. They insult our core viewers. Okay, first of all, if one of these is Chris Stanley, which we know it's going to be, he, we need to educate him. That's I also I mean. can't say Crash 1. That's like the only one I would never pick. Ah! <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, if you're listening to this, you have answered awfully on this survey. Go <laughs> for it, you're drunk. The Can final you, question. You have extra now. points for having sensible answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. The final, final question now. <laughs> Just completely ignore us. What is the greatest games console? Carla? I am going to go for a PlayStation 3. Do I have to do I have to talk about that more? Yep, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's defy that. <laughs> First of all, PlayStation 3 is I'm really gonna annoy people here. It's to me, it's better than the Xbox and Nintendo and everything. In it's just with every evolution, the PlayStation has got better and better and better. I have had a lot of fun with my PS3, and it's probably the thing that has made me as much of a gamer as I am. And I could be a bigger gamer, but it just I keep on getting more and more into it because of my PS3 console, and okay. that's why I like it. Good answer, James. 
I've gone for the PS1. Is, oh. uh, it, it's where it started, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's responsible for, well, quite largely responsible for getting as many people into gaming as, as it has. I mean, I know growing up, all my mates had a, had a PlayStation, and that was it was the thing to have, wasn't it? it had amazing, some of the best games I've ever played released on it, and it was an all-round good console. It was reliable. You could always get it chipped and have your, all your cheats in that on them, and they were amazing. Ashley? I'm kind of torn between the SNES and the N64. I mean, I, I like both. I never actually owned a SNES, but I, um, I played emulated games. I just want to hang my head in shame. But I think most people did just because... Yeah, but how else would you have played Chrono Trigger before it came out on the DS? Exactly, exactly. But yeah, I mean, the N64, I really, really like because, you know, it, it was actually quite underrated, really, for what it could do for its time. It was one of the first consoles, I think it was, you know, around the same time as the PlayStation 1, that introduced 3D worlds, and it just actually nailed, like, textures and stuff on, on the head. Like, um, again, you've got Ocarina of Time, you've got uh, Super Mario 64, uh, Banjo and Kazooie. I even really liked Pokemon Snap, which I think is a very underrated game in itself, but I think that was good fun. Was Pokemon good Stadium. Game. Countless. A GoldenEye 007 was, like, it should have been one of the best games, to be fair. I'm a little surprised none of us said that. Yeah, I think I'm going to say the N64. Okay, and last of all, Ed? <laughs> it's funny, because I, I, I wouldn't say PlayStation 1, I wouldn't say PlayStation 3, but I'm going to say PlayStation 2. <laughs> <laughs> You're all little Sony fan. No, no, because I would say SNES is quite close behind on my yeah. uh, thing. But um, no, the reason I say PlayStation 2 is because I think the diverse games range on that is incredible. Um, you've got such high-caliber games for pretty much all audiences on that console. Whether that's uh, platforms such as the Ratchet and Clank series, or whether that's Okami and um, the original Okami on there, or even like it did have its fair share of shooters. It did have, you know, what was the pretty much the birth of the Call of Duties, but that's to appeal to that market, and they were good. And hell, it even had what was originally the uh, Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas before they released on PC later. Very so, true. All all I'm gonna say though is that the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 3 have got that kind of thing where they had a lot of games were published both for them and the Xbox and the PC, whereas something like the N64 was very specific in what it had released was specifically for it. I disagree. But, PlayStation 2 had an incredible range. It, I mean, you, without can bring up my game collection now, it's, it, you can even have things like um, the Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Oh, like, Kingdom Hearts. They're incredible Kingdom. RPGs, and same for Final Fantasy, uh, t- I'd say, 10, despite what some people think. That is a very good game. I mean, the RPG market was incredible, and it was just every genre was well. It had its own uh, successful first-party games, and it outsold the PS3 in the first two years the PS3 was out. Wait, what? It did. It outsold the PS3 for the first two years. Oh, you're years talking about the PS2? PS2. Yeah. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were saying that the PS3 outsold the PS3. I was just like, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, yeah, there the are PS3 some bonus, took a to get off. bonus points to go out on that round. Nobody said the Sega Dreamcast, which got a vote. The Dreamcast <laughs> wasn't that great, let's be honest. <laughs> 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 All of its one game of Power Stone that was worth playing. <laughs> Uh, Nintendo Wii, PC. Oh, I was going to say PC is not, a it's not technically a console. <laughs> Somebody yeah. went for a PC. PS3, so that's a bonus point for Carla. Nobody said N64. One person said PlayStation, James, so you get a point. Oh, yeah. And Edgar? Three people voted PS2. Everyone (laughs) is just like little Sony fanboys. I'm just going to sit here in my kingdom and fight. Because the N64 is a good console, and so is the Snake. I've got my N64. I've got the Sega Mega Drive. I've got my PlayStation and, and I've got my, my Xbox 360. I'm an Xbox man. Yeah, is. but this is this is my point. Like I'm the same as you. I've got a PlayStation. I've got my Xbox 360. I've got my laptop. I've got uh, N64. I'm a multi-platformer. I'm not a fan person, but if I was to lean any one side, it would be Nintendo. But then I wouldn't touch the Wii with a barge pole. So okay, so it's the final round now, and this week's final round requires our contestants to present a game. They need to say the title, which console it was on, and its year of release. This will then be followed by a synopsis of the game. The game can either be real or completely fabricated from the darkest recesses of their minds. As per usual, maximum score of three to the most interesting, which points at this stage are very valuable given Ed's lead. So, Ed, as you're ahead, would you 
Would you like to pick the running order? Yeah. Um, Can I just ask, how far ahead is Ed compared to who's in second place? Ed is on 37 points. Right. Oh Ash is on 34. <laughs> Jane Who? and Carla are tied on 31. Okay. How have I managed to come out of that with more points than that? Okay, for that then, I'm going to say um, for James to go first, then Carla, then I'm going to say myself and then Ashlyn last. James, what is the title of your game? My game is called Dark Down. It was released for the Atari Jaguar in 1996. And it's about a a mother and daughter combo. They're travelling somewhere. They break down in a backwater town um, where the protagonist, uh, Sky, her daughter, Clara, is kidnapped. And she's got to piece together the clues to find her. And she finds she's been kidnapped by a mad cult living in a a village that's buried underneath the town by an earthquake. And the cult plans to sacrifice her daughter to a demon in order to blot out the sun and bring the dark down, as they say. Okay. Uh, Carla, what is your game? Tokyo Jungle for the PS3 last year. Humans have become extinct and dinosaurs have taken over the world. You control animals in the middle of a deserted Tokyo as they fight to survive. One reviewer called it Grand Theft Auto with lions. And playable characters include a beagle and a hyena. Okay, Edgar? The Infinite Perils of Eyeball Sean for the PC to be released later this year. Uh, it's actually a, it's a 2D platformer involving characters, essentially an eyeball with legs that jumps over what is um, sort of like a limbo like environment. So it's all sort of shadows and darkness, and uh, it's basically trying to get to the greatest gem in the world. Yep. Okay, and Ashlyn left. I have Redneck Rampage, 1997 for the PC. You control a redneck, uh, redneck named Bubba and his brother, and you have to save your prized pig, Bessie, and stop an alien invasion in Arkansas. You shoot aliens in beautiful locations, such as the trailer park and a meatpacking factory. And power-ups come in the form of pork scratchings and cheap beer and liquor. Okay, so Dark Down, Tokyo Jungle, The Infinite Perils of Eyeball Paul, and Redneck Rampage. Eyeball Sean. Eyeball Sean. (laughs) Paul (laughs) Sean. Okay, so Carla, do you think James's is a real game or false? I think it's true. Ed, do you think it's true or false? I think it's true, yeah. And Ashley, do you think Ed's is, uh, sorry, James's game's real? I'm going to go for fake. Tokyo Jungle, James? I believe that's a real one? Yeah, I'm going to say true on that one. Ed? I'm certain it's true. Ashlyn? Yeah, I'm going to say true. Infinite Perils? James? I, I think that's true as well. Carla? I'm going to say false. And Ashlyn? I'm going to say true. <laughs> okay, and last for Redneck Rampage. James? I think that's true as well. Carla? True. And Ed? I also think it's true. Okay, right. So, let's go round. So, James, dark down. It is fabricated. I made that one up. Yay. Really? Yeah. Yay. 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 So that's two points to Ashlyn. Yay. <laughs> okay, so that is a false one. Tokyo Jungle. I thought by saying it so confidently, people would think that it was too confident to be true, but it completely backfired. Yeah, it's true. So everybody gets a point now. Yeah. I've, I've played it quite a few times. It's uh, yeah. quite entertaining. <laughs> In, in all fairness, as soon as you said, yeah, I know that's true, I was thinking, yeah, he's played it. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> Infinite Perils of Eyeball, Eyeball Paul? Or Sean? Eyeball Sean. Eyeball You're Sean. Of Kevin and Perry going I'm thinking of Kevin and Perry. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. That sounds like an indie <laughs> hell. It is an indie game, yes. Yes! <laughs> Redneck Rampage. Now this, can I just say, this is for the win. Okay. Bear in mind, everybody went true on this one. So if it is true, we go into sudden death. If it's false, Ashlyn has won. Ashlyn, Redneck Rampage. I so wish it was false, it's true. Uh, Ah. Dun, 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 dun. This is sudden death again. It's definitely not going to be me. The final scores... 35 points, it's Carla. Of course. 36 points, it's James. Ooh. Tied on 40 points. Whoa! (laughs) May the best human win. It's Ed and Ashlyn. Whilst those two are battling out, can me and James just kick shit out of Tony in the background? (laughs) (laughs) What, Tony? It's just, we haven't paid attention to him for a while. We should really, just whilst you two have sorted it out. 
I've got the tiebreaker. This is going to be to the closest year. What year was Pac-Man released? Oh. I'm going to go with 19... Oh, I've featured this as well. Um, I'm going to say 1982. I uh, see that. See, I was going to say 1981 or 1982 as well, funny enough. Um, 1981! I mm. shout from the background. Stop looking things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say... Yeah, well, yeah, screw it, because that one's not said, so 1981. I reckon it's 1982, but 1981. Pac-Man was first released in Japan May 22nd, 1980. Oh. Oh. It's the closest. No way. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got the other side, you would have lost it. Oh, well, basically, you're Sonic and I'm Tails. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so was that that make was that make her uh, like James Knuckles and Carla? Yeah. Amy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Amy's the shit one, isn't she? I don't mind pink. being Knuckles. Carla, she's pink. Ah, oh, that's even worse. Pink. Oh, you have to draw us now as Sonic characters. We have to turn into them. Pop. pop. Yes. Yeah. And Ed, you get this ridiculously oversized trophy with a waffle on top. I should proceed to devour it. Devour it. <laughs> <laughs> so that is it for our gaming special. Edgar has been crowned victorious. The show itself's going for a, a break for a couple of weeks, but we will be back later on this year. Keep an eye on our Facebook and Twitter pages throughout the summer for, for updates. In the meantime, thank you to my guests today, Ashton Toy, James Miller, Carla Smith, and our winner, Edgar Duncan. Woo! Yeah. Da-da. Thank you very much and have a great summer everybody. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Boy, I'm glad that's over.